morning everybody and thanks for watching so did you know that scripture teaches that the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees your resurrection guarantees the resurrection of all humanity I never really put this together or thought of it in these terms before uh, until I had a phone conversation with Ace Theo uh, a few weeks, maybe a month back, and he had pointed this out. But in search and scripture, it is absolutely 100% true that the resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees our resurrection. We are so closely related and we are in Christ that the resurrection of Christ is our resurrection and the resurrection of Christ is the resurrection of humanity and it's important to understand that as I went over in my last video Colossians chapter 1 or sorry chapter 2 verse 13 says that Jesus he vivifies us together jointly with him not separate from him it's not that Jesus is off on the boat and he's paddling away and then he's yelling to shore at people to say jump in the in the ocean and swim to my boat and save yourselves I'm saved and now you got to do your part jump in the boat swim to me and then lift yourself onto the boat and then you're saved that's not jointly but that's what religion teaches. Religion teaches that Jesus Christ did what he had to do. He died and was resurrected. And now it's up to us to be baptized, to have faith, to make good choices, to walk in good works, to do the law. Whatever it is that your religion teaches you have to do in order to get into that boat means that you don't believe or they don't believe that we are saved jointly with Christ because when Christ got onto that boat we got onto that boat that's what jointly means we're not saved separately from Christ that Christ is saved and he's immortal he's the firstborn of a new humanity and now we have to do our part that's not jointly that's separate but scripture says we are saved jointly with Christ yeah now each in their own order as 1 Corinthians 15, 21 to 28 describes, first, those who are chosen, those who have the special salvation, those who are given belief, and then as judgment runs its course, and as Jesus abolishes death, and we get to the consummation, after the lake of fire is abolished, which is the second death, after judgment, after the thousand year kingdom, after the new heavens and the new earth age, then everybody else comes in. So everyone is saved by what Christ did. It's just each in their own order. And that's what I'm going to describe a little bit in this video. <clears throat> but if we go to, well, let's start in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 31 and then going into the first part of chapter 2 this is Paul writing his letter to the Corinthians and you know with all this conversation about different aspects of what Paul teaches what is taught in scripture Paul simplifies it very much here and it's about knowing Christ crucified well, how do you know Christ crucified? Well, you know Christ crucified when you know what that crucifixion did for you. See, there's many people that don't know Christ crucified because they don't know what Christ crucified has done. But knowing what that has done is the key component in understanding what Christ crucified is. What did Christ crucified do for us? Well, it killed the old humanity. It killed sin and death. It guarantees us of justification, of immortality, of the lack of lack because God will fill us up 
one day, whether you have the special salvation or whether you have a general salvation at the end of the ages. Either way, God will fill you up. So those things are guaranteed to you. In fact, God sees you as he sees Christ. He sees you through the lens of Christ right now. And then eventually we'll actually become justified, immortal, and be filled up so that God is our all. That's guaranteed for everyone. And I'm going to talk more on that in my next video, but each in their own order. See, not understanding the crucifixion goes like this. Oh, Jesus Christ died for sin and was resurrected, but that didn't actually do anything. I still have the old humanity. I still have sin and death operating in me unless I make a decision to turn from this sin and death and this old humanity. Unless I follow the rules and do the right things in order to prove that I was saved, in order to prove that I align myself with Jesus Christ, in order to maintain and earn first and then maintain my salvation, I do the duties of what my religion requires me to do. Then that crucifixion meant something for me. That's not understanding Christ crucified. Because understanding Christ crucified is understanding that you were baptized, you were dragged in to that death with Christ. You were dead with him, and then when he was resurrected, you were resurrected. There's nothing separate in your resurrection or in your salvation. We're all in Christ. We're all attached to to Christ when he goes into death and when he's resurrected you know I used to hear this this preacher say you know when he made his his uh, jokes about eternal hell which doesn't exist of course that uh, when he thought a guy was going to hell James Kennedy I think it was his name Dr. James Kennedy he'd say I don't say people are going to hell but I sure as heck wouldn't want to be handcuffed to him for eternity meaning that the guy was going to hell, so he didn't want to be handcuffed to him. That was his little sick, sadistic joke to his sick, sadistic teaching of eternal hell. But I'm going to use the handcuff analogy here. When Jesus Christ died, we're not free from that. Just like in Romans chapter 5, verse 18 to 19, we're not free from when Adam sinned and death came upon him and now death comes upon all of us we weren't free from that no one's free from the death of the operation of death in them so we were like handcuffed to adam even though we weren't even born we were handcuffed to adam so when death came to all creation it came to us because we were handcuffed to adam Well, in those verses in Romans chapter 5, 18 to 19, we're also handcuffed to Christ. So that we can't help like an Adam to get the death from Adam because we're handcuffed to him. We're going with him. Same with Christ. We're handcuffed to him, so we're going with him. So in the exact same way we get death from Adam, we get what is Christ from Christ. We get the life, the justification from Christ. Not because we did something separate, but because we're handcuffed to Christ. So that's what he does when he goes into death. He handcuffs us. Goes into death we do with him. We're dead, still handcuffed. And when, we're, when Jesus is resurrected, we're handcuffed to Jesus and we're resurrected. We don't get the key and unlock ourselves and now... Christ did the death and resurrection. Now we need to perform separately from him in order to join him. No, we were handcuffed with him just like we were handcuffed with Adam. So his resurrection is our resurrection. That's why Paul says in Colossians that this occurs jointly. We are vivified jointly with Christ, handcuffed to Christ. 
And it all happens in the exact same way that we get death. There's not one of us that has done anything separate from Adam giving us death in order to get death. We got death from Adam. It doesn't matter if you lived a perfect life. You still have death operating in you. Because it came to us based on our relationship with Adam. And so does justification in life and being with God forever come from our relationship and what we are with Christ. So if we look at, um, I didn't even read those verses, verse 31 of 1 Corinthians, he who is boasting in the Lord, let him be boasting. Not in ourselves, in the Lord. And then chapter 2, I am coming to you, brethren, came not with superiority of word or wisdom, announcing to you the testimony of God. For I decide not to perceive anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's it. And all these complex arguments that people have in religion, it all comes down to this, the most important part. Everything else is secondary but to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because that is what does everything. This is all God's work. And through Jesus Christ and Him crucified, He gives us everything that Jesus Christ is because we participate with Jesus Christ and we are jointly with Christ in all that he did in his death for sin, his entombment and his resurrection. So that gives us the immortality, the justification. That gives us the fulfillment of God so that he can fulfill our purpose when he fills us up and fulfill our needs and our lacks and f our lacks and fulfill every aspect of our inner being and self. Fulfill every desire. All because of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. So I wanted to look at now 1 Corinthians 15, um, 12 through 19. I encourage you to read that. Uh, but I just wanted to look at two verses here. In verse 13. Now these are, remember Paul was talking to people here a group of Corinthians that didn't even believe in the resurrection. They were denying the resurrection. He says in verse 12, Some among you saying that there is no resurrection of the dead. And Paul says in verse 13, Now if there is no resurrection of the dead, neither has Christ been roused. Now what I want you to notice here is how closely Paul relates our resurrection and the resurrection of humanity to Christ's resurrection. It's not something separate because remember religion, most Christian religions, I would say every Christian religion, believes that Jesus died and was resurrected. But according to those religions, the death and resurrection of humanity or other people is separate from that death and resurrection of Christ. Not only is it separate that it doesn't apply to humanity unless they make certain decisions, but what that resurrection is, even if people are, are resurrected, they think it's something different than Christ's resurrection. See, many people in religion think that, okay, people are resurrected, but they're just resurrected to be judged and then they either die again for eternity or they're sent to a fictitious eternal hellhole somewhere. So that's not the same resurrection that Christ Jesus experiences right now. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of a new creation and he is immortal right now. That is his resurrection. And that is the resurrection that is being talked about when humanity is talked about. There is not a separate resurrection. It's not that Jesus' resurrection is that he became immortal and the firstborn of a new creation and has all of this. And then the resurrection for somebody else means that they're judged and then they're 
condemned for all eternity. That's not the same resurrection. But what Paul teaches is that humanity does have the same resurrection as Christ. Now we all don't get that at the same time as mentioned in the rest of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First come the believers. God is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers, 1 Timothy 4.10. So those special believers get in first, no doubt about that. But then as things play out, as people are raised after the thousand years, if they were unbelievers, they're judged. Some go into the new earth, some go into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And then, as 1 Corinthians 15, 25 and 26 says, these are the verses right after what I'm talking about here, that Jesus eventually abolishes all enemies, abolishes death, and he is subjected to God. He reigns no longer once he completes and fulfills in all creation God's purpose. Jesus' job was to save humanity and perfect them. And after he abolishes death, that means after judgment, after the lake of fire, after the new heavens and the new earth, after the thousand year kingdom, then everybody else comes in. Whether it's at different times or the same time, all of the consummation, whatever. At that point in time, the job is complete and Jesus himself is subjected to God so that all creation will be filled up so that God can be all in all. So each come in in their own order, but they each have that same resurrection of Jesus Christ. So verse 13, now if there's no resurrection of the dead, neither has Christ been roused. See, if no one, he's, Paul's not saying that Christ roused and then maybe other people wouldn't rouse. No, he associates the resurrection of Christ with the resurrection of the dead. When I was talking to Ace Theo, he was telling me about a translation where the dead ones were actually used, or the died ones, I believe died ones. I don't know if it was the Devar translation or what, but reading and putting into dead here, if you substitute the died ones, it can make a little visual, better visual impact too, if I'm correct in uh, what I recall our conversation was. It was a few weeks ago, so I'm not sure, and I have a tiny brain, so Either way, whether you say it's dead or the died ones, you have to see the relationship between the dead or the died ones and Christ Jesus and how the resurrection of Christ is the resurrection of the died ones. They're not separate. If the died ones or if the dead did not rouse, then Christ did not rouse. That's what Paul said here. Now, if there's no resurrection of the dead, neither has Christ been roused. That's how closely related the resurrection of the dead is with the resurrection of Christ because we are all resurrected and vivified jointly with Christ. There's no separate resurrection. And then verse 16, Paul says, For if the dead, or for if the died ones are not being roused, neither has Christ been roused. So what this says is that Jesus Christ, if you believe that he was roused and resurre resurrected, then you have to believe that everyone that dies is resurrected because it's the same thing. We are handcuffed. Humanity is handcuffed to Jesus Christ, just like we were handcuffed to Adam when we got death. So the resurrection of Christ proves the resurrection of all mankind. And it's the same vivification. It's the same resurrection. You look at verse 21 and 22. First, for, those, for since, in fact, through a man came death. 
through a man, Adam, through a man also comes the resurrection of the dead, Christ. For even as in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vivified. This vivification, this immortality, this resurrection is the same as Christ's. See, we all get Adam's death based on his act, according to these scriptures. For even as in Adam all are dying. Thus also, it doesn't say, thus also only those in Christ. No, it says, thus also in the exact same way that we get death from Adam, in Christ shall all be vivified, made immortal. The same all that die in Adam are the same all that are vivified, made immortal. And in the exact same way, Handcuffed to Adam, we got death by no choice of our own. Handcuffed to Christ, we get life by no choice of our own. And we get the exact same life that Christ got, that Christ has. There's no, I understand there's a resurrection of the dead after the thousand year kingdom. And people stand before God and they're not vivified at that point. They're not vivified, but some go to the new earth, some go into the lake of fire. So they're not like Christ. They're not having that vivification at that point. But that's not what's being talked about here. What's being talked about is after humanity gets the full effect of Christ crucified for them the full effect of his vivification after the thousand year kingdom when people stand at the great white throne they don't have the full effect yeah they were resurrected but that they're, they're not vivified they don't get the full effect of Christ's immortality and they don't get the full effect of everything that the cross and everything that Christ is at that point those that go into the lake of fire, they won't have that until later. But scripture and Paul guarantees that they will have it because they will have the same things that Christ had because they too, like all humanity, were handcuffed to Christ when he went into death for sin, when he is dead and he was resurrected. And what Christ did guarantees that they will have the same thing that Christ has eventually. Many will have to go through judgment. Many will have to go through the lake of fire, perhaps. But Jesus Christ abolishes that and ends death. And that's what lake, the lake of fire is called, the second death. So no matter what it is, that is abolished because death is abolished. And at that point, everyone, all of creation has the vivification of Christ. And if they don't, Paul says here, what he's saying is if they don't, then Christ hasn't. And if Christ hasn't, then humanity hasn't. That's how closely related they are. We all were tied into Adam. And we're all, the very same all, that's the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that die in Adam, that very same all will have all that Christ has, each in their own order, leading up to the greatest verse in all of Scripture, the end game. 1 Corinthians 15, 28, when God is all in all. And that is a guarantee because of Christ Jesus.